guess what? I figured out the central crux of the matter. The issue at heart. And it's kind of simple. A simple preposition. America is a nation full of hypocrites. Follow me on this. By the time it's over, you might agree. How are you going to criticize anyone if you do the exact same shit that the person you're criticizing also does? But for some odd reason, Americans don't see it that way. When they voice a criticism, they should be heard, and the criticism should be taken serious, even though the thing that they're criticizing, they do as well. And sometimes they'll be doing it simultaneously as they're criticizing the other individual. You cannot make this shit up. I won't give you the example that happened to Munwa because who knows? The individuals and culprits involved might be watching this. And I shouldn't want to, well, encourage such other stupidity to follow me. So I'll give you another example. If I'm on the corner selling drugs in the neighborhood, and someone else walks up on the corner and they start selling drugs in the neighborhood. Do you think it would be a good idea for me to go up to that person and tell them you're a bad person for selling drugs in the neighborhood? And the other person knows that I'm also a drug dealer as well. So the other person turns to me and says, well, wait a minute. You're a drug dealer too. And then I say, well, wait a minute. I sell powder cocaine. You sell crack cocaine. And then the other person replies, wait a minute. Isn't it all the same entirely? substance and drug. You see how you shouldn't really ever criticize somebody, even if it's illegal, if you're doing the same fucking illegality that you're criticizing. But let's give some real world examples that are current. January 6th, the insurrection, attack on the nation's capital building. Apparently, according to the Republican National Committee, it's persecution of ordinary citizens. Now, here's where the hypocrisy comes in. You know that if the shoe was on the other foot and the Democrats had lost the election and they got their supporters all riled up, the Congressional Black Caucus, they'll stop the steel rallies, 
And they went into conservative rural counties and said, throw out those ballots. There was widespread fraud. The Russians hacked the machines and switched votes. And then congressional black caucus members went to the eclipse on the Capitol. And on January 6th spoke and riled up thousands of African American people and said this election was fraud and we need to have trial by combat. And then people started storming the Capitol, smashing the windows, assaulting police officers, carrying Black Lives Matter signs into the nation's capital, flags such as this into the Capitol building. urinated and defecated and spread it all over the walls. Stole items from congressional members' offices. Would senators like Ron Johnson be saying that it was like a picnic if the shoe was on the other foot? That's all you have to ask yourself. If those were Barack Obama supporters, Hillary Clinton supporters, Joe Biden supporters, and they had done that on January 6th, what Trump supporters did. If that was Black Lives Matter and Antifa, you know, my crowd, if we had done that, would a United States Senator have said it was like a picnic? Would a whole entire political party put in their platform, their resolution, that this is persecution of ordinary citizens? Somehow I highly doubt that that would have been the case. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Because I'm going to also use what the Senator also said, Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. He said, had that been Black Lives Matter in Antifa, he would have been a little concerned and worried. Well, wait a minute. What difference does the group, their philosophy, make in terms of what actually transpired? People assaulted and murdered police officers. People broke out the nation's capitol building windows and doors. They ransacked congressional members' offices. They defecated and spread it all over the walls. What difference does it make if it was Black Lives Matter and Antifa? Why would you be a little bit more concerned and worried? Is it because, well, their pigmentation would have in large part been different? Is it because their political ideology would have been vastly different? It wouldn't have been persecution of ordinary American citizens, you mean? You know why you're getting that type of rhetoric. The overwhelming percentage of individuals who participated were white conservative males. So of course you're getting its persecution narratives. But had it been African American males in the thousands who did that, Somehow I think the conservative political establishment in America would be singing a vastly different tune. That's hypocrisy. And this nation is full of hypocrites. You know, we're getting the narrative that Putin is a thug, a murderer, a really bad guy. 
And I don't disagree with any of those sentiments, opinions, or facts. Doesn't sound like he would be somebody I would invite to Christmas dinner. No, no, no. Not at all. But are we trying to really say that we don't have thugs and murderers as well? Really? Let's look at what Putin is doing. He's invading a sovereign nation. Trying to demand and force them into servitude. Into joining the Federation again. In Ukraine, it's like we don't want to be in this fucking stupid federation. Which is their every right. They're a sovereign nation. They have been for 30 years, three decades. Wasn't Iraq a sovereign nation? And we invaded them on false pretense, on lies. Because they had a resource that we needed. Putin is invading Ukraine because they have a resource he wants and needs. It's the same thing. But now we're being told to be outraged. And we should be. But I don't remember this much outrage from the media. Nor the average American. About what was happening in Iraq. Sure, you had some anti-war demonstrators, myself being one of them, but you didn't really have in mass the American populace be against it. And you have to ask yourself, why is that? Because we're a nation of hypocrites. You know, when somebody's holding the mirror up to you, and you have to stare back at your own reflection and see all the things that you've done. See all the wrinkles and freckles on your face. Maybe then you can't criticize the other person's face because they have wrinkles and freckles. This is a year of rapid change. And one of the biggest changes, the hardest change for America is going to be coming to terms with dealing with hypocrisy. Because it's so rampant. We're a nation full of hypocrites. 331 million hypocrites. From all creeds, religions, sexual orientations, ethnicities, you name it. Everybody is a fucking hypocrite in this nation. I know you don't like being criticized. But you like doing the criticizing. That's the issue. You gotta stop criticizing people who do the same illegality that you're currently doing. If I'm going into the store stealing and I'm walking out I'm certainly not going to, well, be upset that other people are going into the store stealing. Shoplifting is huge in suburban and rural communities all across America. But you don't hear about it like you hear about smash and grab in the inner cities. If you're against stealing because it's illegal, why don't you criticize stealing when it happens in suburban and rural communities? Just like you want to criticize stealing in the inner cities. It seems like you're selective in terms of, well, your criticisms. Certain people don't get any criticism. But they do the criticizing of other people. You know they say, repent, repent, repent. The Christians. I'm picking on the Christians here for a moment. But wait a minute. You're asking me to repent. 
And that's fine. I'm willing to repeat. What are you willing to retain? And then, wait a minute. Why am I retaining for something that I'm doing that's supposedly a sin when you fuckers are also doing sins? That's interesting. They're like, we well, purple people's act. The LGBTQIA community. The Lord. The Most High, Christ, Jesus, whatever you want to call him, Yahshua, Allah, all the names. It's an abomination. Okay, if you want to roll that way, okay. But there's a lot of fucking things that you also do that are abominations. But you're certainly fine with doing it because you don't cut it out. And matter of fact, you do it and justify it using religion. And one of those things is murder. Now you're telling me that I should repent for having sex with an individual. But you shouldn't repent for wars and murder. Interesting. They're like, we're pro-life. Really? Your whole life. All lives matter. Really, all lives matter. So can you tell me why they execute more people in the South, in the Bible, than, than anywhere else? Where are all the people who stand outside of Planned Parenthood with their signs? Why aren't they outside those courthouses when they're executing someone? Remember, thou shall not kill. It seems like the Christians don't have any problem executing individuals. Well, they did a bad thing, purple people's out. Wait a minute. Are you saying that if you kill them, then the person who they did a bad thing to, maybe in some cases murdered, they'll come back to life? Well, no, purple people say, we're not saying that, but there has to be justice. Wouldn't justice be keeping the motherfucker in prison for life? No chance of parole? Then you're for life. Life in prison, right? No chance of parole, right? Have they ever protested war? Have they ever, all the churches in mass, gone to D.C. whenever the nation's government is ready to declare war and said no war? Millions of Christians all across America showing up, saying thou shalt not kill, it's a sin, it's an abomination. Do you see them outside with signs saying we should repent for murder? No. They just protest at Planned Parenthood about abortion. And that's interesting too. Because it seems like there's only blame for one individual creature. One gender. Women are at fault for that. They commit abortion. That's murder. You're not going to fault the individual who raped the individual. And now they have to carry the baby to term. You're not going to find any fault with that individual. No. Not at all. It's all you women's fault. I'm telling you. But then when the child is still a child, you know, the whole notion is they're pro-life. And you shouldn't murder a child. Okay, a child is 18 years of age. We've established that you're not an adult until you're at least 27. Your brain isn't fully developed. 
And in the West, you can't even drink alcohol till you're 21. So can you tell me why the same pro-life movement doesn't demand that anyone 18 and under not join the military? You're sending kids off to a different country to murder people who they've never met before. They're still children. And then they could possibly get murdered. That is not pro-life and caring about children. None at all. This nation is full of hypocrites. And nobody's going to like when the hypocrisy, when they see their hypocrisy. Nobody likes it. Everybody goes, oh, wow. You're kind of right. I am hypocritical. So think about when you're hypocritical. Think about when you're ready to criticize somebody for doing the exact same thing that you do. Maybe you're not simultaneously doing it, as some people choose to criticize people who are doing things illegally, whilst they are simultaneously doing the exact same illegality. Maybe you're not doing it simultaneously. Maybe you stole a purse when you were 16, and now somebody in downtown Chicago is stealing a Gucci bag, and they're 16. When you hear about that on the news, and now you're 34, and this person is 16, think back to when you were 16, when you walked into the department store, took the purse into the bathroom, took off the tags, and then came back and stuffed the purse inside your other purse and walked out the store without the metal detectors going off. Or you had a friend who worked in the department store that would leave you things in the back room and you stole, like that, all types of merchandise throughout your teenage years. Think about that when you hear about smash and grab. You're really telling me these fuckers in the suburban areas don't steal? The most theft probably happens in suburban communities. Hypocrisy. We're a nation full of hypocrites. And nobody's going to like how it looks when the light is shown back on them. When they're said, wait a minute, you're a hypocrite too. You do the same shit I do. So why are you criticizing me? Say nothing. Purple people's out. You would never criticize someone for doing the same thing you do that's illegal? No. Never? Never. Never ever? Never ever? Never ever ever? Never ever ever ever? It doesn't make very much sense. You really have to be stupid to do it. There's no way around it. You look stupid when you criticize someone for doing the exact same thing. You do. It's not like people don't know that Americans are hypocrites. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness Does everybody in your country have a right to life? No. Does everybody in your country have a right to liberty? No. Does everybody in your country have a right to the pursuit of happiness? Absolutely not. Rampant hypocrisy. I know you don't like it. It's not nice and pleasant 
to talk about yourself. It is necessary. You gotta stop being hypocritical as fuck. It's a bad, bad look. And the other thing it does, in closing, you lose something I call legitimacy. If I know that you're a drug dealer, then you criticize me for being a drug dealer. If something really big happens, and then I have in the back of my mind that you're a hypocrite and you throw me under the bus the moment you get a chance to because you're a hypocrite. I'm not going to listen to a damn thing you have to say, even if it's really important. It's kind of like the boy who cried wolf. You can say hypocrisy and lies are kind of the same, but they're not. In my opinion, a hypocrite is worse than a liar. There's some times when you might need to lie. There's absolutely never a reason to be a hypocrite. Unless you don't think that somebody will call you out on your hypocrisy. Well, America is finally being called out on its hypocrisy. And Americans are finally being called out on their hypocrisy. I hate to break the news to you, but it's not going to get any better.